two are the most beautiful set of twins I've ever seen, honestly. Like, perfect California girls. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but I used to babysit you. And so I've known you for a really long time, and it's been fun to kind of watch you grow up. And what's been interesting is that Kristen um, has been getting treatments over the last 10 years, maybe 11 or yeah. so, and then Kelly, just a few here and there. So we found it really interesting that you both wanted to come in and get interviewed today and kind of see some of the differences that you can see. I know both of you are very busy in your careers and you're both married with kids. Kristen, you're working as a nurse practitioner in the geriatric setting and you're an artistic hairdresser, so you're busy as well. Um, motivators wise, why don't you start telling us, Kristen, what made you decide they want treatments about seven, ten years ago, whenever you started? Yeah, well, I remember a very smart lady once told me, aka Leslie, <laughs> <laughs> that um, just that Botox and a lot of these treatments are preventative. So you, went, you used a really good analogy one time just with a piece of paper about mm -hmm. how when you fold it so many times, um, eventually you're not going to be able to smooth out that wrinkle. And so even you know back ten years ago when I first started, um, I didn't have any major issues that I could see. I just wanted to prevent those um, in the future. So really it was just more preventative. Preventative. And that's that's kind of what we talk about. Yeah. I hear a lot from patients that their husbands don't want them to get treatment because they don't want them to look different. So what's fascinating is if you don't do any preventative treatments, you're gonna age and you're actually gonna end up looking more different because you'll be older and you're gonna look different from that original self. And so I think what happened with you is we kind of put you in a little time capsule and said, okay, stop aging at this age whenever you started those treatments because you've been very regular with them. And then Kelly, on the other hand, you've had several treatments, but not a lot, maybe three or four over the past 15 years. And what made you decide to start getting treatments again? Well, my first time I was actually just gifted a gift certificate okay. and I had never even thought about doing Botox. And so when I did it, I actually really liked the results, but I think just over time I have not made it a priority. Yeah. And so you liked the results the first time. How did you feel? Did it feel different or anything when you actually had the treatment on board? Yeah. I mean, I felt great. I felt like I looked just more awake and fresh. And then I definitely, as it was wearing off, I could see the change and didn't feel as good, but just one of those things, I never kept it up. Right. And so what, what made you decide to start getting treatments again after all these years? Every time I look at her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm tired it. of being the wrinkled twin. Oh. The old twin. <laughs> I mean, and yet both of you look very young and very natural, and I wouldn't look at you and go, oh, you're the older or the more wrinkled, but there are certain things that we can notice when we look at your two pictures. I think mainly, the eyes mm -hmm. and it's more in the eyes and, and so we what, what treatments have you been doing Kristen? So um, well we've been doing Botox mm -hmm. and typically I'll do just my upper face and around the eyes mm -hmm. um, and then of course the Zio skin products which mm -hmm. I love. Um, Latisse as well I've been using for several years and right. I've really noticed a difference in my eyelashes and my eyebrows. Um, I've done IPL, uh, which I like too. I totally notice a decrease um, in the redness that I redness. have. Mm -hmm. um, and then cool sculpting. Oh yeah. I have to mention we'll, cool we'll sculpting. Down to the body. <laughs> yes. Both of you are very fit though. You're both runners yes. and take care of yourselves internally. You eat healthy and all of that. Do you see this as any different, like kind of working on the outside versus the inside? I mean, I think it all goes hand in hand yeah. because like when we run and exercise, I do feel better mentally. And I think just mm -hmm. getting these treatments too, it helps me to feel refreshed, look refreshed. Um, I feel more confident. So I do think they go hand in hand. Yeah, and there are actually studies that show mm -hmm. that Botox is a mood elevator, even in, in studies for depression, like as an alternative to uh, medication. So. It does elevate the mood, it does make us feel better, but going back to that previous um, statement about the differences between the two of you, I think it is more in the eyes, and that's kind of like the window to the soul, right? That's where people look first when they look at you, and uh, you know, I think that, Kristen, your eyes are a little more open. Um, I'm seeing more of the white area, which is brighter, and and the lashes too really extend that out a little bit farther. I don't. Your wrinkles are there at rest, but I don't think they're they've gone past that point where they can't be repaired. You're young enough where that skin can remodel still, yeah. and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what that change could be to kind of open up the eyes, lift the brow, make the eyes a little bit wider, and maybe even some of the crepiness underneath because that's also 
What, you said you felt like a 70 year old. Yeah. Well, you said that she looked like a 70 year old. I said an 80 year old. She was being nice by saying 70. That was so mean. <laughs> but um, but that, that's kind of where it breaks down first. So if you go back to that piece of paper analogy, around the eyes it's more like tissue paper because that skin is thinner. So the more we, we fold that skin and break down that skin, the harder it is to repair that. So. It's, it's not too late. We're going to work on you today, right. so that'll be fun. So I know both of you are very grounded spiritually and you come from a really good moral upbringing just because I've known you since you were little. Um, I want to bring up this question because I do get this a lot from a lot of my patients um, and I just kind of want to, I don't know, settle this a little bit. Do you feel that these modern day beauty treatments are excessive or vain or do you think they're I don't know, immoral in any way? What do you think? I think that in and of itself, they are not. But I think that um, that they can become that way when people get obsessed or um, just compulsive about it. And so I would just, I would, um, if you're, if you do it in moderation, I feel like it's almost the same thing as putting on makeup or getting your hair done or um, exercising and just taking care of yourself. So right, I mean, I totally agree. And you being a hairdresser, you're also in the aesthetic industry, honestly, and you're dealing with women who are coming in spending a lot of money sometimes on hair extensions and and coloring and dyeing and haircuts and that are that adds up. Mm -hmm. I mean could be very similar to what they would be spending on Botox. So do you feel like that is any different than what, what we do here medically? No, I really don't think it's any different um, as far as morally or um, anything like that. I, I think it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand and I do think that, um, that it is good to take care of yourself and to uh, feel good about yourself and to try to look your best. Um, yeah, if I go to the grocery store right after a workout or whatever and I don't have my hair done, my makeup done, I feel like I'm kind of pushing the cart, looking down, not really wanting to make eye contact with people. But on the days when I put my makeup on and do my hair, I feel more confident, I feel more friendly. Um, I feel like it draws people to me even to make conversations mm -hmm. with me. And that's interesting because if those days that you go to the grocery store and you don't talk to anyone, is it possible you're missing out on an opportunity anyway? Definitely, yep. So that's an, a really interesting concept. Yeah. What do you think, Kristen? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I agree with Kelly. I do think that it is important to take care of yourself and to present yourself um, in a good way. And I do think that if you, you know, if you lack that confidence and aren't looking your best, then you're not going to be as approachable. Um, you're not going to have that motivation to go out and talk with other people. Um, so I do think it's good to, I, I don't think in any way that it's immoral, um, but just like anything, I think if you get so self-focused and self-obsessed where it prevents you from doing other things and reaching other people, then, you know, that that could be a problem. But. Well, and just like anything else, everything in moderation, mm -hmm. I mean, you said it earlier, but I also love what you mentioned about your girls, and I think, you know, me growing up in this field, I raised my kids in it. I didn't even tell my kids what I did for a really long time because of what you were saying about your girls. And I think it is important to develop the internal before we even start to think about the external. But what are you yes. telling you? You're not telling your girls. Yes. So as of now, I you know I don't hide my treatments from my husband or friends or from Kelly. <laughs> I, don't, I like to rub it in her face. Oh. <laughs> um, but I do have two young girls, and right now at their age, you know, with all of my kids actually, I want them to focus on their inner beauty and right. developing that. And so I don't tell them about any aesthetic treatments I do, um, only because I want them to focus on what's on the inside. Um, rather than what's on the outside mm -hmm. and I think when they get to an age where they're you know fully developed and mature and can make those decisions if they wanted to have aesthetic treatments I would be okay with it mm -hmm. um, you know as long as they know that our true beauty doesn't come from the outside it's what's right. on the inside so. I mean and it goes back to to your identity your identity mm -hmm. is not in your looks mm -hmm. or how pretty you are or how many people think you're you know, attractive or how many people you're attracting. Mm -hmm. It's more about how you feel about the inside and these things are an adjunct to that. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily like the main focus. It just sort of helps develop and, and supplement that a little yes. bit more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here's the other question. How do your husbands feel about treatment? I guess it goes along with that, but how, how does your husband feel about you getting Botox today? I, he thinks it's cool, but he also has never said, oh my gosh, you look like you need Botox. Yeah, yeah. So, and how about you, yeah. Kristen? And he does think it's silly. He just tells me, you don't need it, 
but I think he just has that like mother's love of like <laughs> he also tells me I don't have cellulite <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> so, but I so he does think it's silly he doesn't tell me that I need things I don't need it um, but I think deep down he can see that there hasn't you know I haven't aged a lot since we mm. have been married and so I think deep down he's happy that I do it I think so too and he probably won't ever admit it because yes. then he would exactly. be like saying you know Kristen why don't you go get that Botox yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. which we wouldn't yeah. want we totally. want our husbands to say that yeah. for sure so thankfully he is supportive to a yeah. point where he you know doesn't want you to change he wants you to look like yourself and that's kind of what we're, we're known for here is more of a natural look and yeah. so I'm happy that he trusts us to take yes. care of you, make sure you don't age. Yes. What motivates you to do this? Is it internal motivation? Yeah, I for sure, I, I think I do it for myself because mm -hmm. I do notice that after um, Botox or other treatments, I just do feel like refreshed. I feel like I just, I know it's, I'm sure it's mental, but I do just feel a little more energized and, and rested. And so um, I think I definitely do it for myself. Yeah. I actually don't think it's mental. Like I honestly, there are studies that have proven that it is a mood elevator, as we mentioned. There's actually another study, this is a really cool study, it's called the Harmony Study. And I'm just gonna read some of these statistics. I think they're pretty fascinating. So basically in this study, they had two sets of images, one before treatment and one after, and they had these evaluators look at them and kind of rate independently and then also next to each other. And the statistics were actually pretty interesting. So. When um, they had treatment on board, they said that they were 300% more attractive with the treatment on board. And by treatment in this particular study, it was Botox and fillers. Um, and then they looked 300% older without treatment. So that's kind of an interesting <laughs> um, number. Evidence of a lie. Oh, you two are so cute. Um, but then the social skills, 300% better to have uh, better social skills or be more desirable as far as life, um, more intelligent looking, 215%, more successful, 200%. They'd be more willing to hire them for a job, almost 170%. Um, but kinder. So this is another thing I talk with my patients too because it is an emotion and a lot of these areas that we do Botox like the frown line and kind of that the eyes narrowing and the mouth kind of pursing those are all things that make you unapproachable mm -hmm. and so if we can kind of flip that switch a little bit open up the eyes make you more relaxed and less drawn down you are going to be more approachable more like more likable mm -hmm. and more likely someone will come up and talk to you about whatever opportunity that it is whether that be a job or or a friendship or anything like that mm -hmm. so there's more to it it's more than just skin deep i mean yeah. it really is yeah. it's it does sort of affect mm -hmm. you psychosocially as well and i love that aspect mm -hmm. of this field because um there are very few aesthetic fields but also even medical fields that affect the entire being, internal and external. So that's that's a cool thing. So I don't think you're making it up. <laughs> yeah. One of the treatments that you actually wanted to get, Kristen, was a little bit of lip enhancement that you haven't really dove into that pool yet. Um, we've done a little lip flip on your lip, which is just the eversion of your own natural lip that kind of gives you a slight look of what it would be to have some lip filler. Um, but you, you're really good. You've been pulsing it with your husband and trying to see where he's at. And right now he's not on board. Tell me about that. Well, so I think that Corey has, you know, when you see someone that it's obviously had their lips done and looks very unnatural, I think that's what he pictures anyone that's going to have lip filler. Mm -hmm. It's going to look very unnatural. And, um, and so I think, you know, he's doesn't want me to look like that and nor do I want to look mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to have a little bit of enhancement and you know again as long as it's natural. But I think it brings up a good point because there are a lot of um, significance but also even women in themselves that come in that really could use a little bit of lip enhancement just proportionally or even they have lipstick lines or wrinkles around their mouth and they're really afraid of getting it done because they they see the people on TV, yeah. they see the people walking around with the big lips. Instagram is huge with the whole big lip thing and it's really doing a disservice to our field because it's making people shy away from actually getting that done where for every person that you see with big lips, there's probably 10 to 20 people walking around that also have lip filler yes. that you can't tell. Yes. So you're not, you're only picking out the ones and that's exactly I think what, what Corey's doing and I, I wish he could come to the office and look through our lip book and I have a range of like, you know, barely any change to like, wow, that is significant, but it takes a lot more product to get that and people don't understand that. They just think lips are lips. Mm -hmm. So. 
Um, I think it, it'll take time to, to work past some of those um, misnomers or miscommunications out there, but, um, but we'll get them there. Anyway, well, thanks for coming and thanks for being a part of this interview. And I'm looking forward to getting your treatment done today. Thank you. And we'll give you something too, because you came all the way down for us.